So you've applied to a new company for an Android position. Great. You're most likely gonna fail if you don't know any algorithms. I've applied to many of these companies. I never did too well with the algorithms part, but I got on. There are companies that don't ask about algorithms all the time. They just want someone who can do stuff, who can finish projects, which is you, if you come across such a company. If not, that's bad luck. If so, these are some of the questions that they might ask you, which I've been asked many times. So here we go. Number one, what is a pending intent? A pending intent is given to a foreign or third party application. You send it off to another application. It provides that application with permissions from your app to execute a piece of code that you decide on. It gives them the permission and even the identity itself. It will be as if the app is executing the code on your behalf, as if it's you doing it. You can see it frequently used in the notification manager when you want to send a notification, set an alarm, you send it off to the system, the system sends the alarm, or the app widget manager. I've never used the app widget manager myself. The pending intent starts at a point in the future, sometime later, it's pending, it's not done yet. The intent, the one you're used to, starts immediately. Number two. By default, in which thread will a service run if you define that service in the Android manifest? So a service will always run in the thread from where it started. So if you start a service from an activity, that service is going to run on the main thread, which is going to block the UI, which is going to cause an application not responding exception. So you shouldn't do that. In which case, he's going to say, what should you do? Now you say, well, I use a background thread. He's going to say, how do you do that? You say, I use RxJava or I use coroutines. Do not say that you use async task. Async task is bad. But don't be vocal when you want to bash async task because he's going to ask you why it's bad, which we'll see in another question. Can you provide some ideas on how you would mitigate uh, memory leaks in your app? Well, of course. First of all, you shouldn't use activity context. You should always use an application context because activities are likely to leak. So the context you're using, which relates to the activity, is dead now. If you attempt to use it and the activity is gone, you're going to crash. This, at this point, is going to be very impressed with you. There it is. Avoid long-lived references to activities. This is what an async task does. It holds a reference to an activity for a long time. You should also avoid non-static inner classes in activities. Always use static inner classes with weak references, so they can't be garbage collected when they are not used. I don't even know what this means, but that's what it is. If you reach this type of level, you better know what you're talking about. Because if he says, oh, interesting, sir, uh, well, I think uh, that if he starts to argue and you don't know what to answer, you're going to regret having said that. It's all about knowing what you know and knowing what you don't know. All right. Also, you can use Leak Canary. You just install this into your own application and it's going to have this client app, which automatically gathers all the leaks from your application, sends you the notification about them. You can just click, takes you to the line, does everything for you. It's very nice. All right, this one, very basic one. What does the word static mean in Java? Well, that's simple. A member of a class that can be accessed without having to create an object of that class. So the make text method from Toast is a static method. So you just class name dot method. Subscribe to my channel. It's very easy. Follow up question to this. Is it possible to override static methods in Java? They're going to be asking you about Java. Not everybody's asking about Kotlin. Not all the time. I just interviewed not long ago. Many of the questions were about Java. Nothing wrong with that. It's totally normal. If you know this, you know that. You should know these things in Java, according to them. Answer is no. The concept of overriding is based on dynamic binding at runtime, while static members are bound at compile time. So, cannot be done. Number five, which of the following is used to let two distinct apps 
communicate. These were the literal choices. If you answered start activity for result, you're wrong. It's intent. And intent allows you to interact with another app. Bonus question. How many threads are there in an async task? If you know the answer, good for you. Put it in the comments. Let me know what you think. In the next episode, I'll answer this question and include some more questions for you from Android interviews from the real world. Good luck.